The following is a class on the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Thirteenth chapter, text number one, given by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, recorded on the 24th of September, 1973, in Bombay, India. Nature, the enjoyer and consciousness. This is the thirteenth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. The Lord is describing what is this material nature, who is the enjoyer of this material nature, and what is the consciousness. We are preaching about Krishna consciousness. Now in this chapter, Krishna himself is describing what is Krishna consciousness. Arjuna Vāca, Arjuna inquired, prakitiṁ puruṣaṁ caiva citraṁ citraṁ eva ca etad vediṁ icchāmi jñāṁ gyaṁ ca kesa. Krishna is addressed here as Keshava, the killer of the Keshi Osu. You know in Vrindavan there is Keshi Ghat. The Keshi Ghat is famous because Krishna killed one Asura of the name Keshi. He appeared in Vrindavan as a ferocious horse, and Krishna killed him. Since then his name is Kesha. Krishna has got many names according to his activities. He killed the demon Madhu. Therefore his name is Madhusuda. He killed the demon Kamsa. Therefore his name is Kamsari. There are many names. Some of the names are in relationship with his devotees, and some of the names are there in relationship with the demons. There are two kinds of men. The devotees and the demons. Daiva Asura Dau Bhuta Sattva Loke Daiva Asura Evacha. Vishnu Bhakta Bhavit Daiva Asura Stad Viparya. Throughout the universe there are two classes of men. One is called Devata and the other is called Asura. Devata means Vishnu Bhakta Bhavit Daiva. Those who are devotees of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is known as Vishnu, Vishnu has got Sahasra Vishnu name there, the original is Vishnu. So those who are devotees of the law, they are called Vaishnava or Devata. And those who are not devotees of Vishnu, maybe devotees of other demigods, but they were called the demons or the osuras. There are many instances in the Shastra, just like Hiranyakasipu was a devotee of Lord Brahma. Of course, the osuras are never devotees. Sometimes they worship the demigods for getting some material profit. Tankhantam karmanam siddhi jajanti ihadevata. That is said in the Bhagavad Gita. Tankhantam karmanam siddhi. Here everyone is engaged in fruitive activities, karma. 
karma in this life and karma in the next life on, performing great sacrifices, giving in charity, pious activities, they are also karma. They are meant for giving opportunity in the next life, a position in the heavenly planet or similar other higher planetary system where the standard of living is very, very comfortable. Thousands and thousands are better than the standard of life in this planet. But that is also karma. Kāntantam karmanāṁ siddhi jajanti yadevutā the people, they want to enjoy life within this material world, but actually there is no enjoyment in the material world because Krishna says there is birth, there is death, there is old age and there is disease. So where is your happiness? After all, you have to die. Suppose I make very good arrangement, very nice house, very nice bank balance, very nice wife, children, everything. But death can come at any moment, then where is your perfection? If after so much hard labor, everything is ready for enjoyment, but I am called by Jamarat, Mittu Sarva Harasta Hom. That takes away everything. Therefore, you cannot say the arrangement you made for a happy life is perfect. That is not perfect. But foolish people, they do not know what is perfection. They simply want superficial, temporary happiness, never mind what will happen next life or few years after, just like children. They want to play without caring for future life. But it is the duty of the guardians to engage them in education so that in future they may be happy. Similarly, all the great sages, saintly persons, just like Vyasa, Narada, Devala, Asit, many, many great saintly persons, sages, even Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, comes to give us instruction so that we can become eternally happy. Unfortunately, in this age, which is called Kali that the people are so low grade that they do not like to hear all these instructions of great sages, saintly person, or even of the Supreme Personality of God. That is the defect of this age. Therefore, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is said, Munda. Munda means slow, at the same time, very bad. In this age, people are short living, their duration of life is very, very short. So much so that at the end of this age, the duration of life will come down to twenty years to thirty years. A man of twenty-five years should be considered as a very old man. These are stated in the Samadha Bhagavatam. And there will be scarcity of food. On account of this scarcity of food, people will not grow very healthy. It is already happening. Rice is selling seven rupees kilo, nine rupees kilo. How poor man will eat? So the more the college will advance, now you are getting 
ten rupees or twelve rupees or nine rupees kilo rice, but rice will not be available at all. That is also stated in the Samadha Bhagavad. Because people are becoming godless. Naturally, the material nature will put them into suffering. That is the laws of nature. They will jesa kunamai mamu maya durutkaya. Just like if you become criminal, the police department is there. The police department will give you pains, chastise. Similarly, the more we become godless, the more we become careless to fulfill the mission of human life, the more nature will give us trouble. There will be no rain. On Avrishti, on Avrishti and Durvikha, scarcity of food stuff and taxation by the government. These are the symptoms of Palijo mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. And people will become so much harassed by these three things that they will voluntarily give up their heart and home and go to the forest. Therefore, those who are actually intelligent, they should not neglect this movement, the subconsciousness movement. It is the greatest welfare movement for the whole human society to make people God conscious, Krishna conscious, without which there will be so many troubles. It is already there. So everyone is trying to enjoy the prakriti, the material nature. Therefore the question is, prakritiṁ purusaṁ caiva chetraṁ 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 eva. This is material nature. And anyone who is trying to enjoy this material nature, he is called purusaṁ. Purusha means enjoyer, and prakriti means enjoy. Just like in our ordinary life, we see a man is supposed to be enjoyer, and the woman is supposed to be enjoyer. Similarly, prakriti is feminine gender, and purusha is masculine gender. Anyone who is trying to enjoy, he is purusha. It doesn't matter outwardly, he's dressed as man or woman. If he has got the desire to enjoy, that is called purusha. And this object that is enjoyed, enjoyed, then it's called prakriti. So Arjuna is asking this question. Prakriti purusham chai. Kindly give me instruction about this prakriti and purusha. Chetram. Chetram means the field of activity. And chetravya. Chetravya means one who knows this is my field. Just like the cultivator. He cultivates the land from government. There is demarcation of the land. The cultivator knows this is my portion of that. Similarly, every one of us, we are cultivating and we have given a fee. This is the body. The spirit soul is the owner of the body or the occupier of the body. Actually, he is not the owner. Uh, that will be explained by Krishna. Idam sariram kaunte chetram iti avidhiyate. This body, my dear Arjun, is called chetra. Chetra means the field of activities. I am a human being because I have got this body. I am acting in a different way than the cats and dogs because he has got a different type of body. His field of activities 
is different. My field of activity is different. So according to the body, we are active. Idam sariram chetram. And there are eight million four hundred thousand types of body. Jarajana, Khani, Shavra, Lakhavim, Sati, Trimayo, Vidya, Sankata. Not one type of body. Nine hundred thousand forms of body in the water. Jarajana, Lakhavim. The botanists are the expert scientists. They cannot say how many forms of life are there in the water. Shavra, Lakhavim, Sati. The botanists there are, but they do not know how many forms of vegetable trees and plants are there. But in the Shastra it is said, Savara Lakhavinsati, two million types of bodies, trees, plants, grass, two million. Everything is specifically mentioned. In this way there are insects also. Kīmāyo-rudra-saṅkata. There are birds, pakṣaṁ, dasarakhatam, ten hundred thousand, one million types of birds. So in human being, manusā, chatur-lakhāne, only four hundred thousand forms of human form of life, of which the civilized form of life, especially those who are born in India, to take birth in India, Bharat Varsha, is a great fortune. Unfortunately, we are neglecting this facility given by nature, because in India there were so many saintly persons, so many great sages. Even Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he descended on this country, India, Bharat Varsha. There are kings like Maharaj Bharat. There are kings like Maharaj Ikhaku. There was king like Maharaj Dhristi, Parikhi. So many. Unfortunately, we are neglecting our own culture. We are now imitating how to become technologists. This is the position of India. Nobody is interested to take this culture of Krishna consciousness seriously. But in the Western countries where they have tested very well the fruits of material advancement of life, uh, therefore the young men there, they are not very much interested to live like their fathers and forefathers. They are taking very much interest in Krishna consciousness. So, in India, they have come that material happiness is not all that is required to make the best use of a bad bargain. But our ultimate goal of life is spiritual realization. The Bhagavad Gita is there. Uh, so many other shastras are there. But Bhagavad Gita is the beginning of spiritual life, A, B, C, D. So even if we do not learn the A, B, C, D of spiritual life, how our life will be successful in the mission? So our only aim is to spread this Krishna consciousness, spiritual life all over the world. We have got more than hundred temples all over the world. But we wanted one also in Bombay. Therefore, we took this land. It was not meant for making any business. Even if we had this land after paying so much money, we are not going to make any profit out of it. The money will be blocked. But if we want to have it, it is for the reason that the people of Bombay may take interest in Krishna consciousness movement so that their life may become successful. So I'll remain here for a few days. I'll come here in the evening. If you like, you can come also and hear from 
Bhagavad Gita and he said, we are very happy. Thank you very much.